All right, Nick, in this last video that addresses your improvements, we're going to talk about how you've done a much better job with your actual swing and the path of your hands through the hitting zone. On the left-hand side is June 7th, uh, the first time we videotaped you, and the right-hand side is uh, today, June 26th. And what you're going to notice is the left-hand side, I'm going to take you through this real quick. The very first time we worked together, we talked about one of the big objectives as a hitter is to get the barrel of the bat working up the plane of the pitch as early as possible and to keep it working up the plane of the pitch for as long as possible. So you'll see here the green line represents the path your bat was taking to the ball. You can see as you finish right there. And the red line represents the actual path of the pitch. Okay, and so the first thing you're going to notice is that you have a very small margin of time to hit the ball. You can see here the path of your bat. You're only going to hit this ball in this spot right here. It's a very small amount of time. And as a result, you're not getting the barrel of the bat working up the plane of the pitch. And there's some reasons why, and we'll talk about those in a second. But if you look on the right-hand side with a very similar pitch, a pitch that's on the outer third, a little bit on the lower side, Let's go ahead and watch you take this swing on the right-hand side here. You'll see the plane of the, the, the path of the swing is working up this green line here, as you can see. And you can see right here, you're already working up the plane of the pitch. And as you continue your swing, you continue to work up the plane of the pitch all the way up to there. And then you have a much better finish because it's a higher finish. So on the right-hand side, you have chances to make contact back here all the way up to here, which is a much greater margin of error. And a lot of that has to do with what you're doing with your hands in your swing. So the next thing I want to do is play both of these swings simultaneously just so you can watch the difference between the two swings. And hopefully you're noticing some dramatic improvements on the right-hand side. Now with that said, let's talk about why you're doing such a better job with your swing path on the right-hand side. First of all, obviously, it starts with your launch position. You can see a much better job, and we already talked about this, of getting your hands into a better spot before you swing. On the right-hand side, you got your lead arm bent. The barrel of the bat is closer to your body. Whereas before, your lead arm was completely st uh, straight and stiff. And so as a result of this movement, this launch position here on the left, you're going to see your first move with your swing is very long with the lead arm. Look at right there how it already straightens out and gets stiff. This is a very long swing. And as a result, the barrel of your bat still hasn't even gotten close to working up the plane of the pitch. Now in contrast, on the right-hand side, you're going to notice that your first move is much quicker. Take a look here how you're taking your back elbow towards your back hip. You're keeping your lead arm bent. And that lead elbow is working its way towards the pitcher. And as a result, you can see the barrel of the bat is much closer to the hitting zone. Now let's go back to the right-hand side. or the left-hand side, and let's see you track down into the hitting zone, okay? This is the position right here where you should have been connected with your hands and your hips. But you can see, in contrast, your hands are way back here, behind your back elbow, so you're really fighting against your body to get the hands into the hitting zone, and your back hip is way out here. So none of these pieces, hand, elbow, hip, are working together. In contrast, on the right-hand side, as we track you forward, right here is where you get connected. This is the position in which you need to be connected, and you're a whole lot closer. Back elbow and back hip are completely lined up. Your hands are a little bit behind, but it's a much better improvement. Look at the difference in your lead arm. Look at the bend here. Notice how your shoulder stays on the pitch. 
In contrast, on the left-hand side, look at how straight and stiff your lean arm is. And as a result, when that gets straight, this shoulder is going to leak open early. So you're starting to see right now all the reasons why the barrel of the bat is working up the plane of the pitch a whole lot sooner on the right-hand side. The simple principles of the swing. As we take you forward on the left-hand side, this is your bat lag position. Okay, and, and all I mean by bat lag is the barrel of the bat, the position when it gets behind the hands. And look where your hands are at in comparison to your belly button. You're not going to really be able to get a whole lot of torque from this swing because you're too late getting to bat lag. You're way back here when the plane of the pitch is this way. Now on the right-hand side, you're going to see a completely different story. When you get to bat lag, you can see here that your the barrel of your bat is already starting to work up the plane of the pitch. And you can see how your hands are a whole lot closer to getting ahead of your belly button. Much better job. Plane of your bat, plane of the pitch. In contrast, plane of your bat, the plane of the pitch is different. And that's all a result of working your hands better and keeping them closer to your body. All right, let's eliminate these lines and go back to contact. On the left-hand side, you got one chance to make contact, and it's right there. And look at how straight your arms are. On the right-hand side, you got multiple chances to make contact. You could have made contact back here. And you make contact right here in a good spot for an outside half pitch. And look at how your lead arm is bent still. And your head's locked on the ball. This is a much more powerful position to contact. Barrel the bat in the plane of the pitch. If you would have been a little bit early, you still would have made contact out here. You still would have made contact there most likely. So you're going to giving yourself a whole lot more chances to make contact on the right-hand side just because, one, you're getting to a better load position, and two, the movements you're making with your hands are a whole lot more effective. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is your finish. We know that with a lower pitch, we want to have a higher finish. But because your path on the left-hand side was so poor, right here you're going to see as soon as you make contact, your hands roll over right there and when they roll over that early it's very hard to finish high and you can see there's your bat and a really low finish on a pitch where you should have finished higher look at there's the barrel of your bat right there now on the right hand side it's a whole different story again you made contact back here but you did not roll over the hands too early they're still getting extended and as a result you have a much higher finish. Now if we take a look at a pro hitter like Chase Utley, who in this clip is also hitting a lower pitch, you're going to see as he gets into his stride, we'll take you back to the same position. You guys look a whole lot more similar with the lead arm, the hands and the hips getting connected, working up the plane of the pitch. Your bat legs are a lot more similar. And when you see Chase Utley finish on this low pitch, look at how he finishes high. And you're a whole lot more close to that high finish there. So really, Nick, you got to be very happy with where you're at. And I, I really believe that you, if you continue to grind and work hard, all this hard work and patience is going to pay off immensely.